Hey, Mama PPLC. Hello, I finally got the Badger situation figured out. We're back live again. I'm waiting for Finestro to join me so that we can start this music industry Q&A. I hope you guys have your questions and that you're ready to ask things that are gonna potentially benefit the entire community, the entire room. Don't be afraid. I love communicating with y'all. I'm human, just like y'all. I'm probably gonna stutter on this live. It's gonna be all good. <laughs> And I may not have all the answers, you know what I'm saying? But if I don't, you know, I'll ask around and get back to you or I'll give you the best answer that I have available to me. All right, Finestro is here. Okay, where he at? You coming in or not? Nah? All right, yeah, now we're in business. Okay, there we go. <laughs> awesome. So you You're doing a phenomenal to... job, by the way. You're oh, doing a phenomenal you. job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me that that uh, you have to turn badges on before right. you go live. I would have never figured that out. And then when you do make a comment, and then when you make a comment, you could go and touch it and pin it so everyone could see it on the comment page as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put in the comments, music in the street Q and A. Boom. Okay, so I commented. Then what do I do to my comment? Then you click on your own comment and you pin it. Ha. Yes, I'm learning today. <laughs> See, I told you I don't have all the answers, but we're figuring it out right it's, now. It's all good. <laughs> wow. So it's your first like industry interview live. That's that's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, I did my time. my listening party live for the Good Fridays album, and I did it with my best friend. Mm -hmm. um but at that time i didn't have access to badges and a whole bunch of other stuff yeah. it was just a really you know simple live where i played songs from the album and then we did prayer together and locked out so it's a little different you know the pressure is different but yes yeah. i have my guitar here just to keep me comfortable because this is usually the time i get to play guitar when the kids are down so oh nice but I'm not, but yeah i'm excited um so how do you want to start this yeah. So I guess we'll wait for people to start sending us questions, but I have questions right. on, of my own. If oh, that's you do? Okay. okay. That I want to throw okay. your way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you know this about me, but, and I'm probably going to lose a lot of followers after saying this, Keeping Up with the Kardashians is one of my favorite reality shows. I did not know that. That's It awesome. really is. It's like in my top five. And so when I found out through the grapevine, that you had did some music for the show. Yeah. Um, like, oh man, I gotta ask him how, but I wanna ask him publicly. I'll tell you. I, I will I will tell you what happened now. <laughs> uh I don't even know where we began. Okay. So for those who don't know me, my name is Phineas Robert, but I go by Finestra because that's like my artist DJ producer name. But a lot of people that know that um early in my career I started really as a musician. I play guitar I started playing in church and I eventually played for Brooklyn Tabernacle for about seven years for the children's and the choir services and stuff like that. So I played for a big church. And during that time, um, I start, I was a late bloomer. So I started doing a lot of music publishing later, like as far as submitting to license, licensing. And a lot of my friends were into gospel R&B, but I kind of went to a different trajectory because I was more influenced, more on like house EDM music at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was, my friend hooked me up with Logic and he's actually, his name is Ray Renard James. He's actually a front of house engineer for Brooklyn Tab. He hooked me up. He taught me some stuff and like, I just went off with it. And then the first opportunity I actually got the placement was through this, um, this is an old company that does like, you know how you pay to submit. It's kind of scammy, but I think it worked in my favor because I paid to upload, and then one of my uploads, it was like submit your beats. It's kind of like a beat battle online, and they kind of, you know, do like a little review and stuff like that. My song that I submitted just happened to be my first song that I ever released, and it was a German artist who I produced for, and uh, it was her first song in America, but it was cool. It was my first EDM song, and that got me like free credits and it got me like noticed 
by other publishers. So they reached out to me. They was like, okay, um, this was Skybound Entertainment down in Atlanta. And they hooked me up. They was like, okay, send me more music. So I'm like, sure. I send them some stuff that I had, like, old garage band stuff. I, I was like, I was just, like, testing the waters. <laughs> Whatever you had sitting in your drive. Yeah, guess what? Like, not only that I got the placement on a Kardashian show, but that same week, I also have a, there's a song that they submitted to Jeremy Scott, who does the, the you know, Adidas have like this um, sneakers, like the Adidas wings. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. So Jeremy Scott is the designer and he took my music for one of his stuff. So it was crazy. Wow. The same week that I got the production show with the same week I got his placement on there. So I was like, that's amazing. And this is my, this is back in 2011 going on 2012. Mm -hmm. and um the first placement was basically and you could you could go you could go back and listen to it it's actually uh, kylie jenner's 16th birthday party mm -hmm. so that whole dance scene is my music everything from when she enters all the way up to you know T tiger i guess tiger came in and like and then run the dj stopped that's when it ended so it was like 32 seconds so that was prime time that was like my first first placement so that was a huge deal wow. you know what i'm saying and um and a little known fact and i have to actually prove this little did i know that when i was doing these song submits through i think it's a website called modernbeats.com i submitted to all these labels like um uh eminem's label aftermath and def jam def jam hit me up and Sky and through that skybound entertainment which is not affiliated with def jam they were just doing sick like this and literally Three weeks within getting that placement letter, whatever, and getting to um, what they saw, what they call catalog A, where they put you up front. I just got a text message saying, "Yo, I think I heard your song on SoundCloud." Yeah, I just found out that Afrojack, you know, the big EDM producer, he took. I know, it, I know, he put, took it because I released my song before his song called his song is named Musician. So he took the dance break part that was on the Kardashian show for his whole song. So what wow. he did, and I can't, I can't prove that he took it, but I definitely know I was in conversations with Def Jam, and I just did research. He was signed to Island Records, which is Def Jam. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, it was kind of, it was kind of like an honorable thing. Oh, he actually took my song, and my song was very, when I say distinct. It was not. Um, it was not a typical EDM. It actually had that, like that Latin Caribbean vibe in an EDM song. So mm -hmm. the the actual cadence and like the the synth melody was very similar, in a sense that it like there's no way you could have done what I've done unless you copied it. So what he did, he he down tuned it. He re he kind of replayed it with like a piano, mm -hmm. and it, it's a banger. So I was like, I can't sue him because I can't like prove yeah. he did it but if you listen but to you both know. of them i know and like people who i don't really talk to a lot they they, 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 they was like yo i heard i think i heard your song because they saw that I, I i got placed on a kardashian show and they heard it on soundcloud a month later two months later people tagging me is yo is this your song so i was like oh man so that was a good that's kind of flattery that was my first song that i ever yeah, released no, when it rains it pours it pours, it like yeah. It, so much happened at the same time for that one particular song, which is yeah a major blessing. Wow, yeah, it, it still pays me today. I mean that I don't I don't watch the Kardashian show sadly, but because of that show, <laughs> <Sadly>. <laughs> I, I yeah during 2011, 12, 13, they was doing a lot of EDM cues, a lot of EDM yeah. crazy stuff. So they kept that accent for more. So that opened a lot of doors for me. From there. Wow. Can I ask a clarifying question for the room? Yeah. You said you uh, submitted your song to a company and um, that some of them are scammy. Do you remember the name of the company you used for that particular song? Okay. It was through modernbeats.com. Um, modernbeats.com. Yeah. I Do they still it. exist? They still exist. I'll be very careful because obviously things change, but I just yeah. happen to be lucky that Oh, even through them, I actually, I won so much of these beat battles online or whatever. Like, they gave me, like, they interviewed me and, you know, I stand the producers, you know, Jay Hatch and them. So I actually got one of the, one of the rewards that I got from winning these, these things online. 
um, I got a lifetime membership for iStandard, so I was able to upload for mm-hmm. submissions through that. And then later, I actually became one of those iStandard producers. We did beat battles, which I won in New York one time. So it was crazy. Yeah. Like, I won a lifetime membership through just submitting my songs to the, doing remixes and all that stuff. So I just, nothing got lucky. I think it was the right time, right place, because look, the kind of music that I was making, it was just like straight, like, bangers you know what i'm saying so yeah. that opened a lot of doors for me to like work with artists from europe and like ghost production for some djs and and stuff like that so because a lot of my friends were like you know they did gospel music they did r&b they did hip-hop so i was like ah, i'm gonna do something different i was always yeah. that type of person was like let me do something different and that really opened so many doors for me like wow amazing that's doors. good that you followed your instinct i feel like part of being a, a great independent artist is being able to to listen to your intuition and make the right creative decisions for yourself and it sounds yeah. like you were on the money with that one yeah i didn't think i was an artist i thought i was just a musician who loved to dj i didn't call myself an artist because i thought an artist was someone who um not just make the music but actually like the front man <laughs> front man you know but not yeah. realizing subconsciously you know i was an artist i was like yo like the song was featured me it was the artist but it was featured me like that's yeah. my sound so never doubt yourself you know what i'm saying i just went with it and 100 yeah so i'm gonna take one of the questions that i saw come up um but if you guys have questions make sure you tap the question bubble at the bottom because then it'll like cue it up for us and then we can see it and share it with the room. If you share your question in the comments, as people are commenting, it'll get lost in the feed and hard for us to see it. Um, so the first question was about playlists. Yeah. And what's the deal with that? And so from my perspective, I will say there are pros and cons, right? The pros to playlists is that your music gets... Um, more visibility by a larger audience that you probably wouldn't have been able to achieve on your own. Um, The cons about playlists is that (laughs) not all of them are legit. Right. You have to be very careful where your music ends up. Um, I was in a situation where my, one of my songs was on a bot playlist and I didn't even know it. And I got flagged by Spotify and they removed my song off of Spotify. Whoa. Yeah, so um, you have to be very careful. Um, there's, I want to recommend another Instagram account who he does really well at teaching people about Spotify playlists and how to identify whether or not it's a bot or a legit playlist. And yeah. his handle, I'm going to type it in the comments, is at Dorian Group 82. Ah, uh, yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> He's really dope. he knows a lot about playlisting so yeah. again you know there's pros and cons you have to be very careful it's a great way to get visibility for your music but again not all of them are legit so that's my take on it how about you finestro first of all shout out from japan whoa good morning whoa what <laughs> good morning i'm just noticing okay now interestingly hey, it, you know playlists are really good because before this whole playlist um situation happened on the streaming end and the time i'm talking about 2010 2011 blogs used to come out with their own mixtapes like song of the week and stuff and then later remember i told you i was doing these like remix competitions and beat battles there'll be like dj something you know mixtape and you submit music to them and you pay x amount of dollars for that exposure it's a hit and miss because that time, those were gatekeeping ideas where people will try to secure the bag. Now that has yeah. been unleashed because of streaming services. Now you could set up your own playlist on YouTube with other like-minded artists, big and small, that has amazing sound, and put your music within that deck that will mm-hmm. guarantee you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Make your own playlist on YouTube. On, on uh, You could like hit up curators outside of music who actually have big following. And, like, you know, if they have a playlist and people follow them, ask them, hey, can you add me to your playlist? Or say, hey, here's my music. Use it for YouTube videos. You actually move the needle to get more, you know, plays. So so I feel like playlists works in that route. But, again, to kind of go to what you said, I agree. Be careful for bots. And there are some playlists that requires you to pay to, to get plays because they need to kind of, like, 
review the song and see if it fits oh, in can other I pause you for a second um when this whole yeah. thing happened with my spotify song that i taught told you guys got flopped, yeah, yeah yeah they yeah. sent me an email saying that paying for to be on a playlist is illegal in their right. terms and conditions which also i didn't know and there's so Man. many there's so many companies out there that are offering yeah Remember back in the days in, in New York, they'll do these showcases, artist showcase. You got like, Tony. Oh. Sorry, yeah. I had to say hi to Tony. Tony. <laughs> yeah, like what? Yeah, like fifty tickets to sell to kind of recoup the price that you pay for these showcases in New York. It's the same exact concept, but it's done online, and it could be scary because you know promoters do bag a lot, and some artists aren't able to recoup. They just want the opportunity, so yeah. um, you have to be very careful with that. Yeah. Tony Rich is in the room. I don't know if you, know, you guys know who he is, but he is the Tony Rich from the massive R&B hit, Nobody Knows It But Me. Do you remember oh, that song? Oh, my gosh. Let, yeah. me, let, me, let me fix my uh, shirt. <laughs> <Make sure I'm laughs> right. Get your cords ready. Wow. Oh, it was it a might pleasure. be a live jam session in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. It's so good to see you. Wow. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. Where so, in the world are you now, Tony? What's up with your shows? We want to see you. We'll wait till he answers. But yeah, any other questions? Um, I think we touched on the playlist already. I saw something come up. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Duval. Am I saying your name right? Oh, here's here it is just for you. <laughs> I miss you so much. I haven't seen you in forever. This pandemic got me like a prisoner in my own home. <laughs> nah, man, you looking you you you're looking sharp. I'm the I'm the, <laughs> I'm the one who look like a vagabond up her here. Thank you. I'm gonna have to take a trip to Hollywood, Florida, ASAP. A A A S A. <laughs> no, I'm seeing that. What's good, Shay, Andre? All right, the homies. Everyone's coming in here. So, um, I guess I have a question for you because it's oh. interesting. We we know each. Well, I know of you through other people like you know, Steph Reed and and Christina Malice, Dirty South, and Shay, and stuff like that. So, like, and I, Christian, it's, it's, yeah. And Christian, yeah. So it's funny, like later in life <laughs> i got to reconnect with someone like you and that's it's crazy how it works out but like um we had these conversations you know before a lot of people don't know like because you know i started doing music in the church and then obviously branched off because it just came to me through those opportunities like how were you able to establish your, yourself as a singer songwriter independently and still get those credentials like how did you obtain that notoriety, you know, through yeah. New York, you know, how, how did you even get there? So it's so funny that we're in this room together because our stories are so similar. It, it like gives me chills. Yeah. So I also started in, um, in a choir. So it wasn't a church based choir. It was a community based choir, mm -hmm. but we sang religious music and we went around the city performing gospel music. And that's where I got all my training. That's how I learned how to, how to harmonize, how to sing with other people, how to like really be mindful of the people around you when you're singing in larger groups and small techniques that made me become a better vocalist. Um, and so I stood on that path with choir for a while. And when I got into high school, I joined a girl group within that choir and we kind of sort of branched off, did our own thing and mm -hmm. found a producer. That producer ended up being one of my mentors, and he taught me how to record myself. He taught me the, the foundations of engineering and all of these tips and tricks that eventually allowed me to become self-sufficient and do a lot of work on my own. Um, but from the choir, going back to the choir story, I was in my down and outs, like just ready to give up on music, right? And I'm working a normal job, nine to five. I'm working in a school at the time. And I get a text message from my choir director. And this is years later, you know, like I had left choir years later. 
and he says to me, are you busy this weekend? And I'm like, no, what's going on? I haven't spoken to you in forever. <laughs> Thank you for, you know, reaching out. And he said, I have a gig for you and um, I need to make sure that like you can make it because this is gonna be like a big deal. So I'm like, sure, I'll be there. I'm not thinking anything of it, you know? I'm just like, that's my choir director. I trust whatever he says. When he says go, I go. I show up and the session was for a Kanye West song. <laughs> and no, listen to this. It was for the Kanye West song that he played only during his proposal to Kim Kardashian in Paris. Wow. The song is called Awesome. So remember you were saying that you did um, a song for Kylie, I think, Kylie Sweet 16. And you see how that's like very unique, very special. Yeah, so, and, one of, and one of my songs actually just found out, look at my royalty statement. You know when they went to Armenia? Uh-huh. They chose another song when they, like they, they had another sequence where I guess when Kanye, it was after when Kanye went to that school with the gifted kids. It was like, they was kind of going to their old home or whatever, their ancestors' home, whatever. They chose my song for that scene too. So it's crazy how, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and then, so in that session, we did multiple things. We worked on that one song. And then we also did background vocals for um, On Sight, which is on the Yeezy album. Yeah. And then during that session, we all performed so well that the producer, he was like, yo, I want to get y'all on some other stuff. And um, the next session that we got called in for was for J. Cole. Woo. Another big moment where, like, I'm showing up to the studio, just ready to work, and, like, J. Cole is actually in the room. The He's very hands-on. Cut the Kanye sessions. He wasn't there, but J yeah, Cole yeah. was there, and he he's was very like handsome. at the piano teaching us chords and like, I want you to sing it this way. Oh no, let's try it that way. And it was like such an amazing experience, and it was it came at a time when I needed it because I was ready to just not do anything anymore in terms of music. So for me, that was like God saying, "Don't stop. Show I up. Bigger, I got bigger yeah. things for you." Yeah. I know it's background vocals now, but trust me, the vision is gonna grow if if you just keep on. Don't don't give up. Yeah. And so that that's kind that's of how I, I started my journey. And so from there, I was always writing and recording myself and like making my own little EPs that nobody ever heard. So after that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna release my first EP. And I'm gonna finally like allow myself to be seen and just see how people respond you know and that was yeah. my ep ascension came out in 2015 i think yeah yeah yep so your ep came out when i moved pretty much was planning to move out of new york because i moved here 2016. oh wow okay yeah. yeah wow so that's my story and you know of course one one stone leads to another stepping stone and another and another and it kind of just keeps growing as exactly. long as you stay focused and you keep working yeah yeah that's that's hey, great sean you got your hand up you got a question what's up sean it's good <laughs> let me see if down yeah, here it Andre, says no questions yeah, yet if y'all have questions make sure you pin them at the bottom so we can see them so i have another question for you while we're waiting for more questions to come in okay i see you posting on your instagram um photos and videos of you and your children and you're a very family oriented man and i respect that about you i think it's um super important to give flowers to the men that show up and are there for their kids yeah that's so with that so with that being said my question for you is how do you manage being a full-time dad and an independent musician what does that look like for you well that's a very good question because this is something that even before I was married, even before I had children, I knew when I did work. Like, for example, I'm a techie, so I always worked in technology. I was an IT person. I worked with Nintendo and worked with Microsoft, whatever, but I still would do music on the side. You know what I'm saying? Music was not something that was separate. It was in everything that I've done. So it wasn't like... I compartmentalize. So as a father and a husband, it wasn't like I'm husband now and that and that musician. No, it was me. Like 
it's me. So like when I see my kids, it's not a shock for them to pick up a tune or play drums like naturally or you know what I'm saying? And like do all these things. And this the skill of music has been a part of my language. You know what I'm saying? So you know, grew up in my home, you know, I'm Haitian, so we spoke the language, eat the food, but we also sing and dance. This is how we communicate. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's living through my kids. And then for me being able to do that, um, the only difference between me and someone who does it full time without a job is the fact that um, a lot of people's careers rely on what I do. So I, there's a certain a lot of projects that I'm able to do. So I do say no. I can't say yes for everything. So, yeah. um, and and it was the, it's the question of like really finding the balance of um, what's important. Because I have to wear the dad hat. I can never, like, even while I'm on a gig, I could never take off the dad hat. Like, there's one time I had a gig, um, not too long ago when things opened up. My son, he missed me. He he saw me on stage. He ran up to me, and while I was playing my bass, I was playing my synth bass, holding like, the whole song. Daddy! Yeah, I, and he was sleeping on me while I was playing. I mean, Aww. the the artist understood. I I was so scared because you know, like. So, so a lot of people don't know my son. He's on a spectrum in terms of um, his language. Um, he has something called echo, something echo. Basically, he repeats words a lot. He's learning stuff. He's very intelligent, very oh, intelligent. I, I, I know it. But he he's he's two years old, but he's still speaking gibberish. But yeah. he understands and he he repeats stuff. So he's learning le words, and he has a high palate. He wasn't you know he was a his birth was kind of traumatic. So mm. he's still learning and his delayed speech. So there's a lot of times there's a challenge to kind of help him understand certain things I'm saying. So through music and through motion and things, he was able to understand a lot of things and, you know, have, have it. So when that dad hat never comes off, you know what I'm saying? Word that a husband hat never comes off. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It never comes off. It's me. It's, it's what you can't separate the two. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, that's, the, I don't know if that answered the question. So I No, it does. I mean, one good thing that you pointed out is that being a dad comes first. And then, you know, it's all about finding the balance and knowing when it's okay to say no. You know, setting yeah. that boundary for you and your family so that you can be available for both. Yeah. Matter of fact, sometimes I don't really get the balance. Sometimes it's going to be a lot of balance because um, you, have to, you have to think about this you're let's say you're working with people with two three three different time zones you got the west coast then you got people who live in you know mountain time then you got people who live in germany and norway i have to cater to those people too so it's like the way i have to react to you know certain messages i was like yo hit me up what's up here okay for this email me this so it's like it's hard yeah. and i'm still learning that but at the end of the day the satisfaction is not just getting paid to do what I love, but actually seeing people's careers go to another level, you know, and also leaving New York was a huge deal for me, actually, because there's this concept and you could relate too because you moved too. Like just recently, yeah. Yeah, just recently, literally like I was afraid of leaving. I was like, man, I'm afraid of losing my contacts. I left, you know, I, I was a full time musician for a Grammy Dub One church choir. Why did I leave that? I mean, if something was greater, you know what I'm saying? I have a home. I have almost an acre or two. Bamboo, I'm going to cut. Like, I have a home here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got a car. Like, I'm, I'm a free man. You know, when I say yeah. free man, like, I, and the, I don't... And the dream continues to grow. Yeah, and literally when... And it's funny, I didn't, I didn't announce I was moving. I've noticed the people that I've helped, and that's, another, I guess, another question. Like, the people I've helped in my earlier years, in my composing years... They're in different positions. Someone's working with Nike. Someone's working in, in you know, in LA, whatever. And they hit me up because they remember the things I've helped them with. And like literally, just before my firstborn was uh, born, I had like three placements. Like one with Nike, uh, um, Foot Locker. Another one with um, Buxom Cosmetics with Iman with with the Vava Plump campaign. Literally months separated, just before my son was born. And literally what I got paid from that gig, from those gigs, paid off all the, all the, the pretty much the, the medical bills. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's how I knew that God really was like, yo, yeah, I, made, 
and and I made more money. Like I'm up, I'm open and honest. Like when you you know that you're doing something good, when you have to pay taxes, a whole lot more taxes. So when I when I was living in New York, I was making, I, I paid enough. You know what I'm saying? But when I moved here, yo, the first year I had to pay thirty about thirty four hundred dollars in taxes because wow. because I was getting paid from promo jobs from New Jersey, LA, New York, and then Virginia. Mm-hmm. And the second year I moved, I lived here, I paid twenty eight hundred dollars in taxes because I made what I made here in six months, I would make in New York in two years. Because I was also oh. so I was making way more money on the side. Not even full time, on the side. Like yeah. I was I was work I had to admit I was working in the warehouse for for no first I was working in um I was working for a nonprofit then I was working for a, a dental like a, a a doctor office whatever but I was still doing music I was DJing I was mixing mastering I was making sample packs and I was making beats for people I was making more money on the side in 6 months living in Virginia than 2 years living in New York and and I was living with my brother and my mom so I wasn't paying much rent so that blew my mind I made over maybe Thirty seven thirty thousand dollars off of music on the side. On top yeah. of my on top of my twenty eight thousand, I think. Yeah, oh, my W two job. So I made way more money and I owed the government money. Now I don't owe no more because obviously I'm married, I I have my business together, I have a studio, I have more I have yeah. more liabilities. Organized. I'm more yeah. organized. But I'm telling you, like when I moved out of New York, I moved out like and you know, I opened my hand. I was like, God, I need help. I need to figure this out. When you have your hands open, what happens? You leave room to receive more. You know, you're not, if, you, if you're like, oh, you're like, oh, I've got to hold on to this. Yes, you, that's still no, true. You, nothing you can't, can't nothing go. can't come in your hands. You can't, you, can't mm-hmm. you can't be a blessing to others. You, you can't. So that's what happened. So I felt like there's a concept that I've had developed since I was young. It's called the upside down kingdom of where, like, if you want to go somewhere, you need to help someone get to somewhere they need to be or like do what the opposite, what the industry tells you to do. And guess what? Like I'm a living testimony of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's truly a, a blessing, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So we got some more questions that I saw come in and one of them was, how do you push? Hold on. Let me see. Yeah. How do you push past fear after success? So, Ooh. I can take this. You answer that. Yeah. I struggle with this. (laughs) So I think, first of all, you need to be spiritually grounded. When you're grounded in your faith, there's nothing that can shake your foundation. Yeah. Second is to understand that fear, and there's a saying, is false evidence appearing real. Right. Yeah. Fear is a figment of our imagination it is not true. And then third, like you have to make sure that you're taking care of your own mental health, right? Yeah. Because you're overworking yourself and there's a lot of pressure on you to get things done and deadlines and this and that and the yeah. other. You, it really could take a mental toll on you. So for me, I'm, I'm actively in, in talk therapy. And so I do struggle with those feelings where, you know, when the Good Fridays album came out, I was like, <gasps> Oh my god. The album's out. Yeah. <laughs> People like it. What does yo, it mean? <laughs> I've oh, no. still my yo, my CD my CD got a little dent in there. I've been smacking that thing all day, every day. <laughs> I love that. I love that album. The E P, yeah. Thank you. So yeah, I mean it it and also recognize that it is it it could be normal. I'm not saying it that everyone goes through it, but yeah. it is a normal response to um witnessing or experiencing your own success if that makes sense. do you want to take the next question um finestro yeah. the next question is what is the yeah. best platform oh for shout out music? okay i want to give a shout out leon lacy's in the building yeah. oh my gosh Ooh, leon lacy hey. oh, amazing screen composer oh. we're for tight trip band <laughs> we're for uh work with uh Kurt Franklin, everybody. Oh my gosh. Dad, this is crazy. Oh what wow. is up? We have yeah, somebody crazy. requesting to come into the room. Are you okay with that? Wait, wait, wait hold on. I know, I, don't know. I know we didn't discuss you, this, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> if you know the person, I don't know. 
So I don't know him personally, person. but I don't mind. Let's see what happens. Okay, yeah. what's the best platform to market your music? The best platform? Word of mouth. <laughs> For real, straight up. You know what I was going to say? I think it varies based on your, your audience. Like some people's Instagram might have better engagement than their YouTube or their Facebook or whatever. So also keep those things in mind. Like where are you getting the most traction? Because that will be like the best place to market. Hi, how Hi. are you? Thanks for requesting I'm fine, to I'm join fine. us. Where, what's this your is, name? This is, you this is Homan from India. And you? Wow. <laughs> wow, greetings. From, I'm, I'm from America, from Virginia. And we're both yes, from good the to, US Good to see you all. Same here. Do you have a question for us or something you want to share? What is the topic? We are what doing is your a, topic? Music, a music industry Q&A. Q&A, okay. So my question is, uh, can I be a one-man band and can I have industry also alone without any support? I'll answer that. Yes and no. Yes. Why yes could, and why no? Okay, yes. You could be like Prince. You could play multiple instruments. You yes. could record your own album. Yes. You could mix your own album. But guess what? You're yes. going to need to sleep. You're going to need to eat. Yes. You're going to need someone to take your record, master yes. it, and promote yes. it. So you're going to need people in your team to do the jobs that you can't do while you're sleeping. So right. that would be, hmm, I need a road manager. Oh, I need someone who could set up my instrument. I need someone who can run live sound. I need someone who could, um, who could, you know, who could do tailor my suits. I need someone who could um, teach a dance move to the dancers. So you're going to need a team in general. And also, yeah. and you can relate to this, um, Natalie, when you, like people who win Grammys doesn't necessarily mean they're rich, but they mean they're connected. If you're getting a Grammy, that means you have someone that you work with. They right. have X amount of experience and credits. You may have done one line or two lines that got mm -hmm. you into the room that will get you that album or song of the year because you was with a team of X amount of people. And there's never been a time in history, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, there's never been a time in history that anybody won a Grammy all by themselves. Not even, That's even, even, even Stephen Wonder, he did an album called um, Songs of the Kid of Life. He really recorded most of it by himself. He had a guitar player. He, the only thing he, outside of him was horns, guitar player, bass, and, yeah. and background singers. Even Stephen Wonder himself, who did everything, he needed other people. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, like, you can do what you can, but you have to have a team to be the eyes that you can't see while you're sleeping, so that way you can multiply yourself for success. That's very important. I'll, I'll close it out with saying, there's a, a saying, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but in America we say, jack of all trades, master of none. And that means when you put your hand, your, your creativity, your mind, your energy into too many things that you never fully master this one thing. But so, there's a saying, but they also say, it. you know, but you know, Natalisa, there's also Natalisa, one, one more thing. Do you believe uh, to, in today's world, if we play electronic music, which is more comfortable for Grammy or a soulful music, which one? Which one do you prefer? Okay, I wrote down your question. I want to I hear what Finesha had to say, and then I'll answer your question. Okay. Electronic music all the way. A very, a big, not influence, but one of my favorite artists, K. Trinata. He, he's a DJ from Montreal by way of Haiti, and it shows to you that you can make amazing timeless music with your laptop. So again, mm -hmm. he, but just go back to your question, even with him, he could not won the Grammy if it wasn't for the engineers, if it wasn't for the singers or the writers who were Grammy members who nominate his album that they were a part of. So definitely... Electronic music is the future. It's actually now. It's right now. I would say in my experience, too, um, year to year, the Grammy ca categories are constantly changing. Mm. So make sure that, like, as you're building your genre or you're gathering your ideas, if a Grammy is a goal for you, make sure that you know what's happening behind the scenes with them, you know, so that you're, you're creating. But, uh, but with, you know what? Musicians. Huh? Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, musicians, they, they, they change their 
genre like uh, i love the genre country 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 music but sometimes because of the influence of the uh, people or some sometimes influence of uh, ex- extensive influence of the people i change my mind and play something else jazz classic and something else but uh, which is not really necessarily important because if your genre is really cla- country side country music then you should go on you should follow your track you follow your dream Mm-hmm. but sometimes because of the electronic music because of the technology and its development we change we change you keep changing our mind yeah i think the market has grown to become very diverse and very wide especially with um spotify yeah and so it's interesting to see how people per- per- eh, perceive what's popular right now because it might be EDM for you in India and in New York City it's trap music and in Puerto Rico it's reggaeton you right. know so if there's a specific genre that you want to work on then make sure you're catering to those people you know but if you have access to a group of people that are fans of yours already and they're asking you for this one thing you have the capacity to do it why not okay. i agree yeah i take on it i agree also. so i'm going to i'm going to I'm going to say goodbye. We got to answer some more questions. Yeah, that's so right. Thanks, thanks for coming from India. Wow. Have some really really wow. good questions. You you two are from which country? You are both. We're from USA. I'm from New York. Yes. New yeah, York. we're both originally from New York. I'm from I, I'm I from I'm Mexico from West Bengal, now. Kolkata. I am from wow. West Bengal, Kolkata. We speak Bengali. Bengali, Bengali oh, is the okay. sweetest, sweetest language in the world. I hope you google it. <laughs> I will. <laughs> But language I'll is no word. I'll, I'll look you up in, when I go to India. You are welcome to India anytime. Are you going to play for us? <laughs> yes, I can play. I love it. Oh my god. The ending song. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, from India. He stole the show, y'all. He stole the show. From India. We have a lot of people from You are welcome to India. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Stay Thank in you. touch, okay? Okay. Oh right, yeah. How do I do this? Namaste. Namaste. We say namaste. Namaskar. Namaste. Namaskar. Yes. Namaste. <laughs> you you both of you are invited in India and in my home. Anytime you come in India, please contact me. I'll I'll try to meet you. Oh, okay. that's sweet. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. I don't know how to end the call on your side. I think you have to end it. You have it you have a cross button upside uh yeah, right I side up. Yeah, I press it and it's not going anywhere. And maybe your phone is hanged or something else. <laughs> maybe my phone wants you to stay. <laughs> yes, this is the soul. This is not electronic music, which is why the call is want to stay. It means uh, want to talk more. Yeah. What is your good name? What is your good name, sir? Oh, my name is Oh, Phineas. But we go as I go by Phineas. Okay. Okay, I'm going to yeah. I'm going to take one more question before we end this live. Somebody said okay. um Hold on, I'm looking at my notes. Oh, there it is. So, who the how do you know so- how do you know who you can trust in the music industry? What are some Ooh. character traits that you look for? You answer first. I'll go first. You go first. <laughs> you answer first. So for me I like to listen to the things that people are not saying. Ooh. Yes. This is this is so. I think that this a lot is sold. of people show you who they are versus um what they what they can tell you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So for me it's like, you know, 
can I trust you to be on time? Yes, if because silence up, speaks a lot. If you show up 15 minutes late to hang out with me, then how do I know I can trust you to do something else? You know, like little, little details like that. Yeah, I I'm agree. I also have passion for people because I understand people make mistakes, but I think the first time is a mistake. The second time it's like, okay, that was my bad. And then it's a pattern, you know, and you have to decide whether or not this is uh, an energy that's worth entertaining. All right. Wow. We actually have the similar core values. Is one thing I also look at. I I look at also how how do they like everyone has energy. So if they come in the room, like how are they perceiving? What are they bringing to the table by their etiquette, by their character? and what they do behind closed doors. I know who a person is, is how they treat themselves and how they treat other people. Mm, so, do. like, I don't, I don't care if you're an amazing musician, but if you do X, Y, and Z, for example, like, you, you come late or those etiquette things, but then, you know, the way you talk to the person who you don't know, talk to them in a way, like, disrespectful or, like, rude, and you don't know who the person is, like, that lets me know what kind of person you are, you know what I'm saying? And how you deal with business and how you deal with, like, human beings, you know what I'm saying? And on top of that, yeah. it just, it just does not, it doesn't fit right with me because I'm a very open book and very diplomatic. I don't judge. I judge people based on what they do to me, but I don't make the, def I don't make the sentence on them. They, they're, you're only getting what you put into it. So um, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah. Do you want to add anything from India? <laughs> Only love and peace. Only love. How about, like how do how do you know um, who you can trust? What are some things that you look out for? Look, uh, if you look somebody, uh, ninety percent you know from his or her eyes, her mm. looks. Okay, ten percent you need know you need to know after after meeting or after spending a uh, couple of years and months. But 90% you only know by seeing, by watching. If you are a songwriter, if you're a writer, if you are a, a critical thinker or anything, then you must will know 90% of. Wow, that was very spiritual. That's, the, that's the, yeah. Wow. Hey, Jenna, thank you for the badge. We got our first badge, y'all. Yay! <laughs> we had Dirty Soft is here. See us here. Wow. Were there yeah, any questions like that I missed? Let me see. Anybody mm -hmm. missed? Love that. Okay, somebody question. Love the harmonica. That is. Thank you. Divorce music. And this is is, this is amazing, man. <laughs> like I'm talking so from <laughs> India. <laughs> from India. We love you. This is amazing. We're taking the last question. We got eight eight more minutes before okay. we close this live. Okay, okay, okay. Play something. Oh. Play something. Finish show. Play something. What play, sir? You know, you know what? You know what? I have the same guitar, the same color. You know, the same color. I have that guitar only. Uh, this is a Yamaha. Wow. Yamaha, yes. I have Pluto. Hey, z -Bad. My name is Natalie. Oh, z -Bad. <laughs> Oh, bro. He's my, he's my college roommate. Oh, man. He is so talented. Like, this dude could rap his butt off. I remember we was in the lunchroom, and he, actually not dorm, he was like, give me three topics. He was from the top of his head, he'll rap. Like, hopefully keep doing that, man. For real. Wow. That's incredible. Dixon, to me, this is encouraging. The guy play while you sing. So the, the complicated with, thing with that is that we're not in the same timing. So okay. it, it's not going to translate well. I wish they would update the technology so we could be like in real time with each other. Right, right. But I'm getting like a delay and then sometimes you guys yeah. freeze too. Yes, it's delaying. Don't worry, Manny. I'm going to do a full live performance on the next live. I'm here. I'm here. I got you. I got you. <laughs> this is amazing. Wow, how could we end this? Like, um, uh, oh, guess... we got another question. We got a question? Cool. Yeah, we do. Hold on. Why do you I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna invite your roommate into the room. Let's oh, see if he 
Oh my God! Yo, okay, I think I I just did. I did. Yo, Zach, what's good? Yo, what is up? Yo, I had I had to chime in. Uh, I'm not I'm not trying to steal the spotlight at all. No, no, we love it. We love to see it. You know what's really funny, Natalie? I didn't know who you were. Then I just checked you out on Instagram. I'm like, oh, I know exactly who you are. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> yo, yo, Finn, uh, y'all were talking about lazy people in the industry. I felt lazy when I lived with him because this guy is up at 5.30, 6 o'clock every morning. <laughs> he cries. I believe it. <laughs> oh, my. I'm like. I wake up at eight o'clock. I'm saying this guy's been gone for two hours. Where have I been? Oh my goodness! But uh, yo, Finn, listen. I so Natalie, I got to tell you a funny story, and I'm not trying to make <laughs> no, no, it's okay. No, no, no. You, we got five minutes, so you're all good. So uh, Finn's mother never met her, but she called us. She's a sweetheart. Love her. She said a lot of nice things on the phone. And uh, really made me feel welcome, like, after two or three days of living with him. But this guy fell asleep like Jimi Hendrix. He, <laughs> he had his guitar on and just underwear and fell asleep <laughs> with his guitar. I'm telling you, man. That's so true. Oh, my uh, gosh. Now, listen, I'm from the Northeast. He is, too. But he sleeps in a lot warmer of a room. I couldn't sleep. He turns it to like 75 on the third step. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, yo, it's the middle of February. I'm opening up the windows for this guy. And he, made, um, he taught me so much. But the other thing is, I didn't know that uh, mothers from Brooklyn send like. No, Haitian, Haitian mothers from Brooklyn. Uh, I, I'm white. I can't say that. Haitian mothers from Brooklyn. Here we go. <laughs> Send their son's care packages that consisted of fish Yo. in a can. What's fish in a can about? Yo, okay, true story. Yo, yo, my mother sent me lurgu, bun and pit, uh, basically rice in like a cauldron of like food. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Like, I can't yo. even remember that. Oh man, I, I had no idea. And I married a woman from New York, she's from Long Island. I'm like, Yo, why is your mom sending you fish in a can from Brooklyn? <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? But, hey, Natalie, so if anyone want to join, then tell me. I'll go. And I think if if there is someone waiting for the video call, then you should uh, give his or her preference. Okay. Okay, oh. yeah. Right now, we don't have anyone. So it's up to you okay. if you want yeah. to then, stay, then stay out or if you want to go. That's your call. Yo, that's so. This How is about so we funny. close it out with this? Uh, hello. If we can all uh, think of one thing to is, say. One positive thing. This is Jebat. Jebat twenty two. What is your name? I'm from India. I'm from India. Uh, my name is Zach. Listen, Zach. I, I, Phineas gives me a lot of props. I'm just up here. I want to be like a stand up or something. Just saying funny things. I love to rap. I do. I don't. He's from. It. He's from Philly, by the way. <laughs> Philadelphia, the land of cheesesteaks and cream cheese, where y'all don't probably have that out there, but I'm telling you. Uh, I pray for the people out in India. You guys are dealing with tough times right yeah, now man. with the COVID. But, yes. uh, yo, Phineas, Phineas going back, and then I saw, I'm like, Natalie. Then I clicked on, I'm like, oh, I definitely know her, which made me laugh. But, uh, so funny guy. two things. I, I, Natalie, I know your time's signed down, but I sort of want to hear, like, uh, your. This guy over here, I, I missed your name. I want to hear your Elton John impersonation of how you can do Piano Man. That would be dope. Elton and then John. Natalie. Okay, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> and then finish it up. Yo, Phineas would put me to sleep playing the uh, Jimi Hendrix American <laughs> Anthem. Yo, he plays that Jimi Hendrix American Anthem. Oh, my. He hits every note. And I'm just like, man, the, you need to get Fourth of July gigs. Like, like whatever. I, I woke up. I wanted to have an American save flag in my Save this live. Oh, my gosh. Please I save am. this live. This is going viral. This live is going to, it's probably going to become part of a podcast. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we have, we have one more minute. So how about we close it out with this? And I sure you can say one thing to the room um, for aspiring independent musicians what would you tell them guys be yourself 
Um, everyone has a, has a plan, but keep your plans open. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I love music. Don't be afraid to create the music that you want to do. You love J. Cole. You love Kanye. You love, you know, Chris Brown, all the people. That's them. But create the music that you want to create. Because guess what? There's someone in the other side of the world, tens, hundreds, thousands of people, probably hundreds of thousands, a million people who would love what you create. So be authentic to yourself. Create it. Don't be afraid. Be unapologetical. And I guarantee you, you're going to make it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make it. Stay true to yourself. Straight true to your sound. People's going to love you, who you are because that's who you are. That's, that's all I got to say. Yeah, you took the words right no, out of mouth. I was going to say the same thing. Don't be afraid of being authentic, being truly who you are, because that is when we often create the best music, and it's yeah. often what people need to hear. Exactly. So make sure you stay true to yourself, and don't be afraid to believe in yourself like a mad person. Yeah. Because that's what it's going to take for you to stay focused, for you to continue achieving. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful hour. Yeah. Wow, we've been together on this for an hour. I yeah. Know. We gotta do this yeah. again. I'm going to have another live next week with another one of my colleagues. His name is A.D. Johnson. He also plays a huge role in the sync world. So make sure you guys have your questions ready for next week. If you have not seen it yet, I released a new video today right before this live. Head uh, over to my YouTube channel. Show us some love. We got badges Natalie. on. If you know, if you walked away with any knowledge today from anything we said, don't be afraid to donate. We like money. <laughs> hey, Natalie, uh, can you add me to that? I I'll donate some money. I just want to throw out a few jokes, but I'm gonna yep. go ahead and say you look too. You got the makeup <laughs> going on. You're looking great. I'm sitting but here, you know, I got I'm a filter glass. helping me out. I got I'm a filter helping me out. <laughs> I'm sitting in my bathroom because my wife's asleep. My three daughters are in bed, but I love talking to y'all. And oh my goodness, look at those teeth. Beautiful. But hey, <laughs> I, I got Thank a plug you. to get on that level. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, yo, yo, add, this add is me. I, I'll be on for three minutes. I'm just trying to get. Uh, I do stand ups on Wednesday. I'm just trying to get my uh, my time. Just throw stuff out there. Test That's the amazing, out. man. You, you, you. I knew you'd do something like that, man. And you can <laughs> rap in your stand ups, man. Oh man, I, I'm working on material right now. It's tough when you got to keep it clean to stay true to your faith, but right. it is where it is. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. But not, Natalie, you got to follow from me and you know ping me. I want to join. Uh, just three minutes. I love talking to y'all and Phineas. Yeah. Is, yeah, he's one of my favorite people. I wish I, I could, like, he could be my neighbor for life. He's, I know. He's man. <laughs> I'm in Silver Lynchburg, but I come down. I'm here. Yeah, he'll be he'll be sneaking up my kitchen so quick with that can <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's bacalao. I think it was the bacalao. That was, it was the bacalao. Yeah. All right. Night, y'all. Natalie, nice meeting you. Good night. Same here. Bye, y'all. Thank you for joining me. Good night. Bye. Good night, y'all.